I think some of the magic of Oxbow is that at a very important time in your life, you left home and you had to start making decisions on your own. For most of us, it happens when we go away to college. We're both empowered and terrified all at the same time, but we're starting to claim our life path. So to be able to get a jump on that can be very empowering. Now, the Oxbow School is one of a handful of semester programs in the country. It's the only one that's based in studio art. Put your proposal onto the folder. That gives students a one semester opportunity to really explore an area of some interest to them. I didn't really know what to expect when I was coming here. I knew that it was going to be a very big change in focus with the art and the academics, but I wanted to be challenged both creatively and intellectually. The area I live in doesn't have very much in ways of sort of cultural or intellectual pursuit just because it's so far from any big city. So I guess my expectations were to come to a place where I could fully immerse myself in art. I kind of expected it to be an artsy fartsy kind of place and people with rainbow hair and mohawks and actually there's only one girl with rainbow hair and she's cool. I wasn't really prepared for how much of the community that there is. Like a sense that everybody's here for the same reason, which is to be here and to do art and to pursue what we love. And it's not necessarily people that want to be artists or be in that field forever, but that that's something that right now is important. For the first 12 weeks, we're actually in standard classes. The classes are interdisciplinary and longer than high school classes. And lastly, knowledge is power. A lot of comments about nobility and ambition. So they're growing their attention spans as well as every other talent that we cultivate here. It's also really discussion based. So the teacher is not really just talking at us and writing things on the board, but rather it's sort of a round table discussion. Is there anyone who would see the potential for knowledge as power being a negative thing? Well, yeah. you can yeah. abuse your power. Okay, abuse it. Yeah. And also, it depends who's teaching you and what point of view they take. because that Your voice gets to get heard. And you definitely learn differently than you do in a big high school rather than learning just what I need to take tests. It's more about your thought process. I've definitely been able to think more outside of the box. And I'm sure all of us. I think if we're successful, the student walks away not just with a set of studio skills, but they also recognize how interconnected almost everything is. When you divide up the high school day into six or seven periods, it's a completely artificial environment. You know, we don't think like that. We don't live like that. Everything does flow and influence every other thing. So in an environment that encourages the search for connections, you can begin to sort out for yourself what's important to you and how to pursue it. Oxbow really changed the way I felt about learning in general. It uh, got me much more excited to learn and it made the way in which I wanted to learn independent. At some point in high school, I really wasn't interested in going to university at all. And then I got to Oxbow still had some of those feelings but also got really excited about the potential of going to college. They really helped me to develop confidence as a student just by one-on-one -on -one working. For the last month of the program they are working on a project of their own device, something that they have chosen that they can do in the studios that also has a research component. It can be broad, narrow, or personal, whatever you find really interesting and that you're passionate about. And when we get to that point, classes are over, and they just get up every morning and they approach the day like any artist in the studio with, how will I move my inquiry forward? For my final project, I'm working on writing and illustrating a 20-foot book, accordion book. I'm exploring the trait of curiosity and whether it's a vice or a virtue in humans. I personally am looking at the subject of reality and hyper-reality in our culture and how everything is supposed to be in the media like perfect, that we need to have things that are more real than real. I guess I'm really nervous about making it something that's meaningful to me. 
And I want to make it something that means something. I'm studying the psyche and sort of what composes our subconscious, and whether that's environmental, scientific, or social. I'll also be doing sort of a self-exploration and conducting a lot of little tests and dream analysis, personality tests, and my final project will be the portrait of my own psyche. So I'm hoping to sort of uncover some of the mysteries that go on in here. What happens on the final project is that they are working for an extended period of time so that they actually know their subject very, very well. And then comes the show day and we clean out the galleries and we paint all the walls and we install it like a real gallery. And in the morning we invite families and board members to the show and each student makes a formal presentation about their work. It's so great to see everyone all dressed up and everyone looks more mature and older and wiser than when we first came here. And this final push has really gotten everyone, you know, to stand a little bit taller and be recognized as an artist. I want to welcome you all here, parents, friends, and supporters, and a special thanks from the staff, myself, and all of these people. A special thanks to you for getting them here, letting them come, so thank you very much. Without you, this doesn't happen. As I prepare the kids for this day, I talk about most adults aren't expecting you to be literate and articulate about what you're doing. They read the headlines about teenagers. So when they see what you can do, they're absolutely amazed. Hi, I'm Simone Salvo, and I'm from Gloucester, Massachusetts. I have always been extremely fascinated by the unknown, and I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm trying to get to know myself. So um, in a personal context, my unconscious self is the most unknown part of me. So um, my piece right here is sort of an inquiry into my psyche. And what happens is that on that day, the kids get that very solid affirmation for their work from people who haven't been watching it daily, but who are seeing it for the first time. If there are any questions or you can approach me later, that'd be fine too. Yeah. This is my little world that I've created over the past month. It uh, is a hyper-reality, which is a, a term described by philosophers such as Umberto Eco and Jean Baudrillard as a state where things are more real than reality itself. And I think that there's a moment between all these different factions where anything could happen, where friendship or violence, and they're balanced on the same fulcrum, and they could sort of tilt to either side. And uh, this is what I'm trying to capture in my piece. I decided to do a piece about something that's really relevant in my life right now. And Maybe art isn't the most important thing that happens to a student here. Even though they've had major breakthroughs or realized they had talents. Maybe it's much more important to find out that I can be on my own in a group. I can take care of myself. I can live outside of my parents' influence and, and survive and feel good about myself. I think one thing you could say about most of our grads is that they leave here empowered and activists in their own lives.